Yeah, well, my name is, uh, is Hinne, Hinne van der Haarst. Uh, I have a farm here uh, in the south of Denmark with 195 cows, Holstein cows. We are uh, farming on 110 hectares, about 65 hectares of, uh, of grass and uh, 45 hectares of mice. I am from Holland. Uh, I know zero grazing from Holland also, from, uh, from my youth. Uh, then I became a manager of uh, big farms in Germany. And then, uh, yeah, I got a chance to buy this farm uh, in Denmark uh, myself uh, in September 2021, actually. We have a milking parlor now, an old uh, double ten uh, herring bone, uh, taking uh, two times three hours to milk them. We are uh, renovating the barn, we're changing to three uh, milking robots. So we, uh, we are on uh, 11,400 kilos energy corrected milk. I don't know if I can hold that yield, but actually I'm not worried if it goes down a little bit. I have like a 45 hectares here around the farm and 170, 180 cows outside. With the weather today raining, uh, it will get muddy, uh, it will cost milk. And then of course with our plans for robot milking, uh, that's not gonna work either with, uh, with grazing. Yeah, there, has, there are some uh, that uh, can also manage that, but it's at least getting more challenging. And then with my setup with not too much land, with zero grazing, there's no losses. All, all of the grass gets eaten and if the cows don't eat it, I have my pregnant heifers on the other side of the feeding table, so next morning they get to rest, so they can eat that. So there are no losses. And that's also an advantage compared to silage in the silage pit. You have this process of becoming silage, losing some, some, some feeding values. Everybody has some dirty uh, top 5, 10 centimeters. Uh, that farmer saying he has no problems with that. He probably is lying, I would say. So you throw some, uh, some, some, some silage away. And with, uh, with uh, zero grazing, you throw nothing away. I met Jürgen, uh, the, the importer of Grastec here in Denmark, on a uh, dairy exhibition. We bought a new wagon. It's a GT120. And I bought a uh, really old uh, Shondir uh, tractor uh, to it, to pull it. It's a real uh, easy, uh, easy machine to operate. It's, uh, you have this, uh, I have two hydraulic valves. One is for the side uh, movement, so it's, it's uh, going uh, to the side of the tractor. And the other, uh, the other valve is for, uh, for the other functions. Yeah, it's easy. We were at the point, either we had to build another silage bunker, or we were starting with zero grazing. Now, uh, my opinion was I wanted zero grazing, so it was easy, but it was actually an argument uh, to the bank saying, hey, either we take 400,000 Danish crowns on building a silage pit, then it's in concrete, then it's there, and then we have to stick to the system for the next 10 years, or we buy this wagon, we try it. If it doesn't work, I can sell the wagon again. <laughs> but like I said, with conventional silage in the bank, there's so much money stuck into a silage pit waiting to be, become milk and become money again. There's a much higher return of investment or, uh, and then how do you say it, money flow is much quicker uh, if you take it from the field to the cows. The previous owner was feeding a lot of uh, concentrates, 15 kilos actually. We changed uh, pretty quickly after one month. Uh, I saw that was uh, costing way too much money. So we changed to uh, about nine, 10 kilos of uh, concentrates. Uh, which resulted in uh, less milk yield, but higher fat and protein. I think you have to look at the grass as a feeding component. And if you manage to understand what grass you are taking in and reacting on it with what you're feeding in the mixer wagon, I don't think that there should be a problem. Actually, we uh, got down in this spring with zero grazing to six kilos of, uh, of uh, concentrates and uh, could keep the milk. We're not after the highest amount of milk, we are actually after the best results from this field, from this farm. If that's 30 liters with 5% fat, so we milked last winter, then I'm happy about that. Important is that I get as much as possible feed from my fields into the milk tank, actually. We, uh, we do nothing on the fields. It's all uh, contractors doing the field work. So it's a big save. It's on, on, on cost, on contractor. Uh, taking the, the grass into a silage bunk. Actually, if you start counting, he has to cut it, he has to rake it, he has to chop it. There are three tractors driving it up and there are two wheel loaders in the bunk to get it in. 
And then I have to take it out with the wheel loader into a mixer wagon, so that's seven times diesel with a zero grazer at one time diesel. It's not necessarily being more in control. Actually, you have to deal with the weather and with, yeah, today the sun shines and tomorrow it rains and the grass is changing a bit all the time and also between the fields it's different qualities. But yeah, that's, that's my challenge to, to control this. Uh, what I do now is I feed them in the morning during milking with the mixer wagon. So there they get them, the, the mice silage, the, the, the concentrates, the minerals and some grass silage, depending on how much grass uh, I can uh, take with the zero grazer. After breakfast I uh, get the first load of grass, they get it on top. And now uh, with, uh, with the evening milk, uh, milking I uh, get another load of grass for the night. So I compared the first nine months of this year with the first nine months of last year. We could see that we saved uh, 70 tons of, uh, it's called uh, rape meal, I guess, on English, um, which is a lot of money. Then we saved about 140,000 crowns, so 20,000 euros on the contractor, uh, not having to bring this grass into the silo pit. Actually, we kept our milk amount. We did, in, in, in spring we got up in milk a little bit. We were down on six kilos of uh, concentrates and we were up on 60, uh, 36 kilos uh, of energy corrected milk. That, that was really fun. Right now uh, in autumn, uh, yeah, the milk is a little, low, a little bit lower, but we are still uh, driving on just seven kilos of concentrate. So uh, yeah, on the end of the day, I think we get the same amount of milk, maybe a little less, uh, but with much lower cost. Yeah. Actually, you meet a lot of, uh, a lot of farmers who are critical or who think uh, it's, it's not gonna work. Um, and yes, it is a challenge in, 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 in autumn because uh, the quality of the grass at a certain point is going down. If I put this into a silage pit, I also know it's going to be crap uh, that I have to feed someday. You only place, the, place this problem to a later moment in the year, in, uh, in winter or something. But there I also have to correct it with some concentrates to, to, to get it to work. I'm much more after the end result, at the end of the day, how much money do I make? Uh, doesn't make sense to have high yield with high costs and losing money on that.